Hello everyone, today I'm gonna talk about how to be the best intern in your residency program or how to thrive in your intern year. And I was very fortunate in my residency program to get this award as outstanding intern of the year. And uh, I'm gonna share some of the things which I wish I knew in my intern year or things I would like you to learn when you start your intern year or if you are already in your intern year, how can you how can you be the best version of yourself and uh, make most out of your intern year? This only comes once in your lifetime, okay? So you'll not be intern in the future anymore. So it's your time to learn, ask, and, and be the best version of yourself. So it's going to be most challenging year, yet most rewarding. So let's talk about first thing, be proactive in learning. And, and what I mean by that is be curious, ask yourself why I should order heparin TID for duty prophylaxis and why not uh, enoxaparin or why not heparin BID. So always ask why you are ordering that test. Do you need procalcitonin before you start antibiotic? Do you need procalcitonin if you want to stop those antibiotics? Or should I trend lipase if the patient is admitted for acute pancreatitis? So these are some of the things which you'll still notice and some of the things might might be done for no reason so always ask always ask your senior if they have rationale for ordering that if they have rationale for ordering stress test if they have rationale of ordering particular stress test okay if you are in your card if you are in your cardiology rotation why this kind of pacemaker so always ask be curious and you know you of course have to do your homework you know of course do some up-to-date basic search so you're not asking you know all the questions to your seniors or attending so you'll have some background knowledge with you and uh, the more you invest in your intern year more you are investing in your foundation so your basic science will be already strong from the basic knowledge and now you're applying those basic science again in your intern year to make a core strong foundation second thing i would say is prioritize time management so when you go in the morning review the patient first thing in the morning uh, prioritize each task prioritize taking care of sick patient try to identify and learn by observing how your seniors are attending are triaging and knowing that this patient is sick and that would need and this patient would need first attention this patient's lab uh, labs and vitals are more concerning to me so i'm more worried about this patient so you'll know how to triage the patient and uh, give attention to the patient who needs um, care first so and and then you can prioritize okay i if i want to call concerts first thing in the morning rather than waiting in the afternoon when they are going home so calling consoles, ordering urgent tests early in the morning. And whenever you have a little bit of downtime, you can always chart, you can always start documenting. So, you know, this is how you'll be able to, you know, master time management. And one thing I would say, always keep buffer time. Always give buffer time to the patient as well. When the patient asks, hey, when am I going to go for cath? Or when am I going to be discharged? Always give buffer time to yourself, to the hospital system and to the patient so no one gets upset. Third, communicate effectively. If you are in the United States, that's the key to success. That can make or break your day. That can make or break your residency career. That can make or break your life. Communication is the key. That's the cornerstone, I would say. And uh, particularly in residency, during rounds, you want to communicate effectively. Like, you know, practice effective communication. When you're presenting something, don't just don't just keep saying jargon if i have entire lab with me and nothing is pertinent i would say bmp is unremarkable cbc is unre unremarkable rather than saying okay hemoglobin is this platelets is this differentials are this or you can just say labs are unremarkable so that's your effective communication when you are going for your own rounds communicate effectively to the patient explain things in very very simple language communicate properly with nurses with case manager with social workers so they are all in the same same uh, loop of communication okay and uh, when you are talking to consultants you have to modify and talk to them in a way that uh, okay they can stratify whether this is an urgent consult or this is an emergent consult then you start by the age and the comorbidity and a specific question for them to address okay and then when in doubt because in intern year you will have doubt always ask for clarification if you don't ask you will make mistakes and mistakes are also inevitable so you will learn from those mistakes but always always ask if you are in doubt okay 
it's better to ask than to make a mistake. Fourth, build a strong relationship with a team. This is a teamwork, right? You are not a physician by yourself. You are with your senior resident, you are with your attending, you are with nursing staff, case manager, social worker, all the paramedical staff. So everyone in the team is very, very important. Okay, so this is your teamwork. You have to be respectful to everyone. Nurses would have invaluable experience and they can be, you know, savior of of all the residents in tough situation, even in code blue. Okay, so just keep asking um, them what to do next and be very, very respectful to them. And your seniors are also a very good resource to learn. So always try to observe and learn. It's not always uh, important for seniors to teach you actively that this is what I'm doing, but most of the learnings would come from observation. So be a very, very keen observer how they are doing the thing so you can do the same in the future, okay? And of course, uh, by building strong relationship, it's also with your co-interns because that those co-interns would be your support system and they'll be your lifeline for tough days. Fifth, be organized with your documentation. One thing I would say is uh, write your notes in a way as if you're explaining. So someone who is reading your note gets a clear sense of why you're doing that. So like for example, for example, a patient is coming with abdominal pain and this constellation of symptoms with the with the labs and clinical findings is consistent with acute pancreatitis and with the scoring system, this patient falls into the category of a, you know severe um, acute pancreatitis and right now we'll, we'll run IV fluids and whenever the patient is able to tolerate, we'll start the patient on this and this diet. So, you know, it should have a logical sense and a chronological order. So you are explaining things. So if someone reads, gets a clear sense of what's going on. And uh, while being organized, you always have to keep a task uh, or keep an eye on pending labs. So if you are ordering something which is very, very important, like hemoglobin level in the patients who are having GI bleed or uh, lactate level if the patient is uh, septic so that's very important so keep a, keep an eye on the pending labs make a to-do list if you are if you're not tech savvy make a physical paper you know always make small box write those things and check mark those things if you have, if you have done that or you can use digital tools whichever you are comfortable with okay sixth while doing all these things you have to prioritize self-care okay you have to make sure you're sleeping well you're eating well you're exercising and you have good men mental stability, right? Otherwise, uh, internship can be draining. So you have to take care of yourself in order to take care of your patients. Okay. Seventh, stay calm under pressure. Still, it's it's hard for you know, all of us. You know, you would get panic here and there in, in critical situations like rapid response, code blues, and uh, those are tough situations but uh, more you panic more chances are there that you would make some mistakes so stay calm under those situation and uh, and be focused you know first thing first okay code blue airway breathing circulation that's that's okay patient is patient's airway secured you are ventilating patient is intubated you have ambu bag you have chest compressions then, then you can start the remaining ACLS protocol. So, you know, always first thing first and break it down into simple things. And then over the time, you'll, you know, have developed confidence in handling critical situation. More you see, uh, more you'll get better at, but don't let fear paralyze you. Okay, eight, focus on quality handoff. Every institution should follow this I-PASS protocol. That's illness, severity, um, the patient summary action list situation awareness synthesis by receiver so whenever you are signing out a patient you have to just you know do this uh, follow this i pass format uh, things uh, if you if i'm taking sign out things which are important for me is pertinent past medical history i don't want to know if the patient is admitted for heart failure if the patient has uh, melanoma why would i care about that um, if the patient uh, is admitted with uh, copd i want to know what we are doing right now what I should anticipate if I'm a night resident or um, what are the contact numbers in the emergency if the patient is TNR DNI and is deteriorating and is maxed out on vapor therm, who should I contact who is the power of attorney those are very important things for clear communication and clear understanding ninth accept that you made mistake that's very very important to build trust with your seniors and your attending 
you will make mistakes i have made mistakes we all make mistakes regardless whether you are intern or resident or an attending okay admit those mistake own those mistake and say that i am responsible for this and and you noted that and i will learn f- from my mistake and i will avoid that in future that builds a strong relationship with your senior or your attending and that's very very important and mistakes are an opportunity to learn okay so they are your best teacher and you should always reflect on what went wrong and how to avoid in future and 10th last i would say seek feedback whenever you are in the end of your rotation ask for feedback that uh, and ask for a specific feedback okay that uh, what's one thing i did well and what's one thing i can improve on so they can give you a specific constructive feedback that you know you should work more on patient communication don't use medical terms when explaining to the patient that you have uh, pulmonary embolism causing right ventricular strain it's hard for the patient to understand that right so you, you know always take constructive feedback and you if you are on the side of giving feedback always give constructive feedback and use this feedback to refine your skill and you know grow into a better physician so that's uh, those are the top 10 things to sum it up be proactive in learning master time management communicate clearly build strong relationships stay organized take care of yourself stay calm under pressure deliver quality handoff learn from your mistakes and always seek feedback those are the top 10 things i would say to be the best version of yourself especially to be the best intern in your class thanks for watching and please share like and subscribe thanks